Kimberly at Fat Quarter Shop and we are right in the middle of our free Christmas stitch along and this is part one, part two, and part three. Today we're going to work on part four and just remember all the fabric requirements and all the patterns are free at FatQuarterShop.com. We also have a matching cross stitch because the more the merrier. So week four, we're gonna make some Christmas presents and this block is actually the easiest of all of them. And when you're looking at it, there are only three units that have corner squares and those all use fabric C. So on the back of the fabric C squares, I've drawn a line from corner to corner with my friction pin. We're gonna use two fabric H squares. It actually doesn't matter which corner you put it on, but on one corner and I'm gonna put a little glue to hold it in place. So that's our first one. And then our next one is our fabric E rectangle. So we're gonna take this, and this one you need to do both corners. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the sewing machine, use an open toe foot, and stitch directly on these lines. And then what I'm gonna do at the sewing machine is cut a quarter inch away with scissors, press using my quick press seam roller, and then add the second square. So let's go sew all of our corner squares at one time. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cut a quarter inch away, use my quick press seam roller, Press to one side and then press open. Add my second corner square. So from here I'm going to just cut a quarter inch away. Usually I use my rulers but since there's so few of these I think it's easier to just use scissors. They give you the same results. Set your seam press to one side, and then press open. And then I'm gonna show you a little trick to trim this if you need to. When we started with the Fabric H red square, it was one and a half. So what you can do anytime you add corner squares is measure one and a half on each side and then trim and that's going to get any of the excess off if you accidentally didn't sew exactly on that line sometimes when i do it i have some that comes off and like this one hardly any came off but what you can do on this one is on this creative grits ruler on both sides you can either select the white side or you can select the black side but what you'll do is once you have that you'll line up this line right here, line up that quarter inch, and you can see how my diagonal lines are right there, and trim, and it's perfectly the size you need it to be. So now that we've done all of our corner squares, if you look at the rest of the piecing, it's all just straight quarter inch seams. So I'm going to combine a lot of steps in one, and I'm gonna do that by using the efficiency of the design board. So I'm gonna just build the block and I'll start at the top and I'm just gonna follow the diagrams right here and just pull my fabric here. And right here, these are directional prints and you can decide if you want them to be directional or if you don't. We cut ours directional. And in our kits, we give you enough if you miscut. So that's the top row. The next row, this is what's great about using alphabetes and pieces is once you cut, everything's labeled and you really don't have to think, you can just look at our awesome instructions. And now that I have everything laid out, I'm gonna show you how to save time. I'm going to do as many quarter inch seams as possible at one time without pressing putting it back on the design board right after I sew so I know where everything is and I don't have to think about that later. And then we'll press and then we'll just keep building. But combining steps is very helpful 
if you're a newbie, you might want to just follow the instructions and not skip any steps. But if you're an advanced quilter and you want to challenge yourself, this is a fun thing to try. The reason I do it this way is if I don't, sometimes I accidentally sew the wrong thing together going too fast. So the more I pin, the less mistakes I have. And you'll notice when I'm pinning, I always pin on the right side first, the left side second, and then in the middle next because I always want this to be even if possible. Now you saw in the other one, I accidentally did it. I was a little bit off, so it doesn't always work. Now here, what I am going to say is I'm gonna sew these first, but before I come and iron, I'm going to add the sections next to it, and you'll see how I do that at the sewing machine. So when I go to the sewing machine, I am gonna take my pattern, put it on my design board so I can follow it, and I will be using my quick press seam roller to press these. Now I'm gonna switch from an open toe foot to a quarter inch foot, and I'm going to sew each unit. Put it right back on the design board where it goes. And that way I don't accidentally put them back in the wrong spot. Now these two pieces, I'm going to use the seam press, press toward the green, and then keep building to save time. Now when I'm adding these, you need those seams to line up. So what I'm going to do is put the fabrics right sides together, pin at the beginning and the end, and then I'm gonna make sure these nest, put a pin right there, and this top row, I'm just gonna keep adding. I'm gonna add the whole row so I can iron it all at once and I'll just do one unit at a time. So I have everything on my design board just the way it goes. Now, of course, if you wanted to, you could kind of move stuff around and it's not going to affect anything, like if you wanted the ribbon on this side, but we have it over here. And what I'm going to do is just iron by each section. So this one, I'm gonna set my seam, press toward the brown, and in this block, it actually doesn't matter which way you press. These are just suggested, but any, if you wanna change them at all, you can. This one I'm gonna to press towards the red. I'm just gonna press all to one side. It doesn't matter. You could press these open if you wanted to, but I think it looks good. From here I have four seams that need to be done, that's it. So what I'll do is pin. When I go to the sewing machine, I'm gonna get all seams together and then iron it all at once at the end. And if I leave all of my pieces where they go on here, it will be easy. And the best thing about this block is all the work is in the cutting and there's not very much piecing. So it goes together rather quick once you cut everything.
So I have everything sewn together and I'm going to start ironing at the red. Just set the seam, press towards the red. Set the next seam, press toward the red. Now right here, I could unpick this and fix it, but what I'm gonna do is first iron and see if it looks bad. And if it doesn't look bad on the front, I won't fix it, but if it does look bad, I will fix it. So you can't see it from the front. There's no wrinkles, so I'm gonna leave it. So from here, I've got some thread hanging off and I like to trim that off. So I'm just gonna trim right here. And I just want each side to be perfectly straight. A little bit should come off, but if none comes off and just your thread, then that means you sewed perfectly. And here are all of your Christmas presents. They look super cute and it's great to end week four with a very easy block. Thanks for joining me today for our Christmas time mystery quilt along. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and I'll see you next week.